What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinists and we are continuing our coverage of IMTS live on day three. And right now I'm joined by my friend Jamie from Bison. Nice to see you. Thank you very much for joining us today. Now, obviously everybody walking by this booth is seeing this. What are we looking at here? It's a four jaw independent chuck, big bore model designed for the machines with the big bores holding long pipes, uh, any big, big type of material. And what kind of industries are using these right now? Uh, typically the energy industry, uh, you know, drilling, uh, anything to do with that type of industry. And one thing I, we were talking about a little bit before we got started here is not only does Bison actually make these chucks, but tell me about the process that goes into these because you don't just buy blanks off the shelf. Correct, Bison has its own facility in Poland and we do, we have our own foundry, uh, own heat treatment, uh, all the milling, grinding, turning, everything done in house down to assembly, boxing and shipping it out. I've never heard of another company having their own foundry, so that absolutely blew my mind, but I guess that's how you get something this size. Right. And we completely control the whole process that way. And I know you guys are typically known, or most people may know you as, not typically, they may know you as a manual chuck company, but that's not really the case anymore. Correct. We started in 1948 as a manual chuck company. Uh, we've since grown from there, and now we are doing hydraulic pneumatic power chucks, tool holders, live centers, uh, the whole spectrum, vices. We are a complete work holding company. Now the first product I know we want to take a peek at is right over here. Right. So what are we looking at here? So this is our new high pressure precision vise. It allows you to control the, the clamping pressure. It has a, a, a amplifier in there. So when you're set at zero, it acts like a normal vise based on how much pressure you put is what you get out of it. If you set it to the, the one, the two, three, or four, when you turn the vise, you first make contact with the part. Then when you turn through, the amplifier comes in and Setting one puts you at about 2,500 pounds of clamping force, wow. and then it goes up 2,000 pounds per, uh, per setting. Uh, our bigger size of this can get you up to 13,000 pounds of clamping force. So this is really, really good if you're doing some really heavy milling. Absolutely, absolutely. And one thing I will say, I've had some students work at my shop before, I've had some smaller people work at my shop before, one thing they tend to do is not have that upper body strength in order to close the vise. This could really game change for them. Absolutely, keeps you away from the cheater bars, uh, over tightening, allows you to control the whole process. Because I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but one thing guys love to do in every shop is they'll go like this, take a hammer, bink, right. bink, bink, what happens? Jaw lift, part wants to fly out, lose your flatness, it's everything a big bad, everything right. bad. If you don't tighten the screws down, now that vice is going to be like this. It's out of center, everything. This completely eliminates that problem. Correct. Correct. What kind of shops are you seeing putting this in right now? Uh, guys doing big steel parts, heavy cutting, uh, mold shops. They're doing a lot of contouring. I uh, don't want the part to move. Uh, we also see it with shops with uh, more delicate parts allow you to control exactly where the clamping pressure is. Because again, with delicate parts, this is important because delicate part, I clamp too hard, we're Distortion. gonna get a huge bow in it. Correct. No good. Correct. The other thing I wanted to take a peek at while we're here is there's a new line of quick change, I believe it's quick change chuck jaws over here. Correct. What are we looking at? Yeah, so this is a hydraulic chuck. Instead of your standard hy hydraulic chuck with the, with the serrated jaws, this is a quick jaw change chuck. We have a tool that you insert in here, the jaw slides out, change over to the next job, slide the jaw back in, lock it back up. And when you're talking lock, you're not sitting there reefing on that with two hands. Nope. That is very quick release. Now, what's the advantage to that for shops? Setup time. If you're doing a lot of small to medium runs, a lot of different parts on the machine, you don't want to waste time counting serrations, you know, 15, 20 minutes setting up a job. You can do it in minutes here. And as everyone knows, uh, if you're not making chips, you're not making money. Exactly, and the other thing these are set up for, I believe these are hydraulic or pneumatic. Correct, well, we have this in, in hydraulic and then we have our standard in as a pneumatic option as well. And that's perfect for guys who are looking to integrate automation into their shop, because you put something like that on the floor with a bar feeder, 
you don't even have to hand load it or uh, robot load it. You can have a bar puller and all of a sudden you have automation in your shop. Correct. You have one, one employee maybe running four or five different machines because you can automate it to a certain point and he can walk away and do something else while the machine's making money. And with the way the labor market is right now with the workforce, everybody's trying to do more with less and this is a yep. very easy way to get into yep. it. Correct. And I have to ask because I see these all the time and as a guy who's not very familiar with turning, I'm a mill guy, not so much a turning guy. Why do we see these two jaw chucks out there? Yeah, there's actually a market for it. Uh, you have people that maybe don't have a mill. They want to use their, their turning machine like a vise. Uh, you can do that. You have odd shaped parts, uh, uh, you know, limbs hanging out yep. and allows you to have access to, to a part without the three jaws getting in the way. It's just a little bit more versatility if you're doing that kind of Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Now, if we're going to move along here, because I see a lot of products on display here, let's take a peek. I believe these are collet chucks. What are these good for? Correct. We have uh, 5C and 16C collet chucks. It's for uh, parts that are already have a tight tolerance to them. Uh, there's not a huge clamping range, but allows you to accurately clamp on a part that has a tight tolerance. And I know we have one of those in my shop. Typically, if we're feeding something like um, really smooth 304 stainless, if we're bar pulling, we really like those. And that looks like it's going to be the same. What size range do you guys have those in? So we have them in from 5 inch to 6 inch diameters. And then for both 5C and 16C, and we offer the whole wide range of collets to go with, with those chucks. I'd imagine you're putting a lot of these out there in the a USA right absolutely, now. Absolutely, absolutely. And down here, I'm not super familiar with Capto style tool holders. What defines a Capto style tool holder? It, it, it is the connection between the spindle and the tool. Uh, it's a more accurate connection. It's newer technology. Uh, we've gotten into that complete range. It allows you high RPMs, 25,000 RPM, balanced to G2.5. And now you have a full line of those. What kind of length are Correct. we getting out of those? Are they all very short? I'm nope. not super we, familiar. We have, we have various gauge lengths to accommodate whatever kind of reach you might have or, or Z-axis travel issues you might have. And I'm also seeing what looks like a Cat 50 over there. Correct. So ET 50 Cat 50 so, Cat 50 Yeah, so on top of Capto, we have the complete range. Cat 40, Cat 50, BT, HSK, uh, everything you might need. Oh, I'm sealing this one there. That's, uh, oh, that's Capto, that's as, Capto well. as well. I thought that was a uh, HSK, but my eyes deceived me. And of course, if we're moving along here a little more, we've got solid centers. What are solid centers Correct. good for? Uh, great in tail stocks, uh, in conjunction with rotary tables, uh, that type of thing. We have from carbide tip to standard ball bearing steel, half centers, uh, the whole variety for whatever you might need. Why would somebody want to use a carbide tipped center? It allows you to regrind it over time. If it starts to wear down, you can regrind it and get a good tip again. And generally, when I use centers in my shop, we're using them to support long work or we need really accurate turn. Co correct. Yeah, the longer the work piece, if you don't have something on the end, it, it wants to It to bounces blow, around, right? you get poor finish. Shatter and... And now, I've never seen one of these before and maybe I'm just underexposed. Is that a six jaw chuck? That is a six jaw. Uh, six jaw is great for thin walled parts. Uh, decreased deformation in the part. Um, and this is also our set true chuck, which is our, our bread and butter chuck. Uh, it's number one in the industry. It allows you to radially dial in uh, to reduce the run out. And those are, all these are the set true line the, of the, chucks? Just this one, but these are our manual chucks. This is what we started with. This is what we're the best at and, and the number one in the industry. You've been doing it for a long time, so you guys have all the kinks worked out at this absolutely, point. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, if people want to learn more about Bison, where can they find you online? Yeah, if you go to our website at bison-america.com, all of our products on there, catalogs, contact information, uh, we'd love for you to visit. And of course, you guys are here at IMTS for the rest of the week? Absolutely. So make sure if you are coming to the show, you come look for the giant chuck out front. You can't miss it. Stop in and see Jamie. Jamie, thank you awesome. very much for joining thank us. Thank you so much for stopping by.